All right, what's up guys? This is Alex from Xtrades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful week and also had a great trading week. If you thought that the weekend was over, you are in luck because we do have a day off on Tuesday for 4th of July and then Monday is actually just a half day. So markets are gonna close at 1 p.m. Eastern, I believe. So if you want, honestly, Monday, you can probably just sit out, honestly. You don't even really have to do anything. I mean, there is some data coming up, so we'll go over that. And I go over a couple setups, but for the most part, I mean, Monday and Tuesday, it's kind of might be a nothing burger just because the volume is going to be really low. People might already be on holiday. Wall Street might be on holiday, institutions, etc. So we have to be careful with that on Monday because the volume might be down and overall activity may be slow. And then we just pretty much go into Tuesday, uh, not having to wake up, not having to do anything, just get to celebrate Fourth of July. America's great. And then Wednesday, it's pretty much back to back to work. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all full days and great data coming out those days as well. So we'll go ahead and get into the economic calendar here. So Monday, July the 3rd, we do have S&P Flash US Manufacturing PMI. So this can definitely move the market. And then at 10 a.m., ISM Manufacturing comes out, construction spending, and then markets close early. So there's a little bit of data Monday. This could move the market. But like I said, uh, activity could be down and volume could be down and it could you know make the market seem a little bit slow or it'll make the market seem a little bit thinly traded and it'll feel a little whipsaw just because there's low bids and offers and it doesn't take much to move the market and then tuesday fourth of july markets are closed don't have to do anything that day wednesday july 5th we have the adp employment report we have factory orders and then we do have the fomc minutes coming out that day as well so this can definitely move the market especially the fomc minutes because if the algorithms or really anybody picks up on anything they might have missed in the press conference from the last FOMC meeting, it can move the market. But pretty much the consensus was that, the, that they could, quote unquote, raise two more times for interest rates. But who knows? It's all data dependent. And that's why we go over the economic calendar, because as long as the Fed is data dependent, we are data dependent. So it's going to be data dependency until we're out of this mess. And then Thursday, July the 6th, we do have initial jobless claims as usual. We have the U.S. trade deficit, job openings. Uh, I believe this is the JOLTS job openings. This can definitely move the market. S&P flash U.S. services PMI and then ISM services as well. So that's a, uh, the JOLTS job openings arguably is probably going to be the most important. And then the PMIs and the ISM services as well. Uh, those can definitely move the market. So we'll see how that goes. And then Friday, the big day. So this is the big data set. It's the non-farm payrolls. So it's the U.S. employment report, the U.S. unemployment rate, U.S. hourly wages, hourly wages year over year. This is the big labor market data, and it's important. So this is definitely going to cause volatility, and it's likely going to make people try to price in whether the Fed is going to hike or if they're going to pause or if they're going to start cutting rates soon, etc. It could do anything. So that's for the economic calendar. Pretty stacked week for data despite having a half day monday and then being off on tuesday so really your weekend's not over yet i would consider wednesday thursday friday back to work as usual feel free to you know rest a little bit monday and tuesday because it's really not going to be anything going on monday i don't think but we'll see and now we'll go ahead and get into the setups so i do have three this week uh if you don't know i go over 228 tickers so i go over a lot of tickers every week pretty much the same tickers every single week and I just pretty much narrow them down to maybe three to five to uh, three to five setups or so and you'd think I would find more than you know three to five and sometimes I do sometimes I don't out of 200 something names you only get so many that are you know confirmed patterns that look good that aren't choppy and with volatility super low in the markets it can be a little bit harder to find opportunities right now because uh, you don't want to just chase the tops you want to be you know buying dips you want to be taking patterns Stuff that looks good has good risk to reward. So you do have to find those. And it can be tough, even though I have so many tickers that I go through, doesn't really matter. I still only come out with, you know, anywhere from three to five. So this week I just have three. These are probably the best ones I could find, to be honest. So this first one here, this is FSLR. So this is first solar. This is a solar play. You can see pretty much speaks for itself. It's just a bullish falling wedge. You can see we have previous support right here. We have a little rejection area right there. 
and then one right above that. So if this wedge does indeed play out, your first target's looking at 196.48, which is that previous support. And then right after that, we do have 202.22 at this little peak right here, and then 212.35 above that. But obviously you'd have to get through these two first to even think about 212. So for solar, looking at calls, maybe even, you know, maybe look at shares or something if you don't want to play the options, but you know, this is $190, you know, per share. So, you know, the options could be worth looking into because you're getting leveraged with 100 shares on the options. Only thing I don't like about this name is that, you know, there's only like, it didn't even clear 2 million of volume on Friday. So it is a little bit lower volume, but when it does get volume, it does move pretty great. You can see this volume spike here is a really big green day. And overall on the, you know, the volume spikes, it does have good range. Even, you know, it's, it's a good mover. You just have to be careful. Make sure you're looking at the bid and ask on the options. Make sure it's not too wide. Because with stuff like this, when the volume is lower on the underlying, the, the bid and ask can be a little bit messed up on the options chain. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. Try to stick to the ones that have a tight spread. So FSLR, looking at calls. All right, next we're going into Baidu. So this is a Chinese play. Pretty sure it was a Chinese AI play at one point as well. I didn't really read too much into the PR on the AI for Baidu. But the setup looks pretty good. Pretty much there's a rally base rally demand zone. I'm waiting for the drawing to come up. There we go. So we have a rally base rally demand zone here. If it can hold up here pretty well, I feel like as long as it can get outside of this inside bar, it could be pretty good uh, to the upside. And there's a little gap right there. If we go down to the one hour, you can see we have a gap right here. So this is our gap right here. You can see it's from 138 up to, uh, you know, about 140, 141 or so. So that could be pretty decent if it can fill. We could even set an alert here. So we'll just add a regular support slash resistance line, just a regular horizontal line. And then we'll go ahead and right click it. We'll just hit add alert. And then we can name a gap and have a preset right here and just hit create. So we'll wait for that. That could be a good signal. And that would also confirm of it getting outside, you know, of the inside bar that I closed with on the daily time frame. Only thing that I haven't liked about China lately is that their index, their Hong Kong index has been kind of trending a little bit lower and I had a false breakout and that also brought Baba lower. So we did have Baba on watch and I also took a call on Baba and it's just been getting slammed. So there was a fake breakout, which I don't like. And you know, that can happen with these foreign names. I mean, you're pretty much banking on gap ups and gap downs. So, cause they're trading in different time zones. So you have to be careful with that, but we'll use this 137.96 alert that we set into the gap if that triggers that you know we can go ahead and look at calls and even if it doesn't i mean it's still it's still a pretty good zone and your risk off would just be under the demand zone low it's going to be about 132.46 and if you're going off a one day demand zone obviously you know you want to keep this as your stop loss as long as you're like in a swing trade or have time on expiration because this low for a day trade just too low and you know, that could bring big drawdown to short-term contracts if you're day trading them. So you will have to make your own stop loss for day trades if you're trading off this zone, just because 132 is a little bit too low. So Baidu, looking at calls here, just make sure you wait for the 138 gap trigger, or, you know, you can make your own risk and try to, you know, day trade off this demand zone still. Just make sure you keep the stop type. Next, we're going into CCL here. So this thing has been squeezing. I'm guessing there's a lot of short interest because the cruises weren't doing so well, you know, after COVID. A lot of them really struggled financially and they weren't getting a lot of bookings. You know, the, the world shut down for a little bit and it took them a long time to recover. So now you can see, I mean, it's starting to kind of squeeze up here get a little violent i think it looks a little bit overbought you can see the rsi here i mean before it even pulled back the last time the rsi got all the way up to 85 and i had to get up to 85 for it to even you know make people realize that it was a little bit overbought and then it instantly got bought up uh, right after their earnings report so rsi is getting back up to that same spot another thing i see here is that you see the price is all the way down here you got the RSI right here and you got the RSI making a lower high and you got price making a higher high. So that could be a bearish divergence for RSI. I'm not a big divergence trader. It's just something I did see. So it could be something worth looking into. Obviously, you don't want to step in front of a train, you know, automatically. You do want a little bit of confirmation before you try to, you know, short this or take puts. But I think it looks a little bit overbought. So I'm going to be looking for like put scalps and stuff on this. I think it looks, you know, pretty good to start looking for a top soon. Obviously, with a big bullish bar like this, you don't want to just instantly get in the next day look for puts you'd want at least you know 15 minutes of confirmation of selling at the open something showing you that 
Sellers are starting to pick back up. Supply is getting offloaded and it's overbought. So CCL here, I'm looking at puts. I'm just keeping in mind this high RSI. Obviously, I, I would never chase calls when it's looking like this. It's just too much. And it's good for day trades and stuff. But I mean, these hype plays and these squeezes don't always last very long. So what goes up must come down. Eventually, you just have to wait. Make sure you're patient and don't just, you know, try to step in front of a moving train like this. So make sure the open session is, you know, giving you some confirmation of selling. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to the hourly and 15 minute, looking for, you know, reversal candles, looking for top sellers wicks, all types of stuff. So CCL, I just need to see a little bit more evidence on the one day before maybe looking at a put swing trade. But this could make good put scalps on the shorter time frames because, I mean, I feel like this is just a little bit overbought. So obviously maximum I could put us down to, you know, this little rally base rally demand zone that you see right here. And that's, you know, going to be around 17 flat or so. And that's as, that's as low as I could put it because if it pulls back, it could just hold up right there. And obviously it had to break under demand, you know, maybe back test the, the low and then, you know, flush this little buy imbalance right here and then there's another demand zone right here that's like a almost like a drop base rally zone so that's as low as i can put it for right there i feel like you know if it can get under this demand zone it could get to this but you know you do need that evidence first of it breaking this one and then we also need evidence of some type of daily candle showing a clear reversal a nice you know, reversal candle, nice red candle before, you know, trying to grab a put swing on this. Otherwise, I'm just going to be looking at scalps. So CCL here, looking at puts. All right, next we're going into the indexes. So we're looking at the SPY here. So we went ahead and added back this MACD just because uh, it could be given a little bit of signs that momentum is slowing, but it's starting to curl back up here as well. One thing we were focused on last week was this inside bar on the one week. And if you were able to mark that and wait for the alert to the upside, Friday gave a pretty good signal, you know, to trade calls because it gapped over the inside bar high. So this is our inside bar right here. We set an inside bar high and inside bar low and we set alerts and we just waited for you know, waited for it to trigger. You can see once we gapped over the inside bar high, we had a very bullish day on Friday. We had that PCE inflation data. That was looking pretty good. People are really grasping on to that soft landing narrative now. And as we keep getting more data, people are starting to see more evidence of that because our economy is very resilient. So, and it seems like inflation is going down. Maybe not at our target yet of 2% or anything, but you know, it, it, there is some evidence that's coming down according to their data. I personally don't really see too much inflation falling you know the grocery store or really anywhere else you know you, you do see the gas prices changing a lot so interesting but you know who knows if you know that data's legit or not can't really argue with it though it was showing a trend lower for inflation and that's why we gapped up so heavy and had a big bullish day but now you can see we're pulling into this four what's that 443.90 this is big resistance we rejected off it towards the close you can see it had a little bit of a struggle there so that's pretty much the level of focus this week that 44390 it absolutely has to get over that in order to break out and go higher and before you take puts or anything and be like you know this could be a double top you do want to see some confirmation and you want to see some type of you know reversal candle some type of red candle maybe some follow through in the vix maybe some follow through on the dollar uh, maybe more evidence of volatility coming back because just because it's pulling into resistance doesn't mean you should instantly pull the trigger and take puts. Just make sure you're paying attention to candles. Candles are really important to pay attention to. I highly recommend, you know, just go do a quick Google search, look up reversal candles, or just look up bullish or bearish candles. And they'll give you like a little chart and they'll show you each type of candle. There's like a shooting star, which is a bearish reversal candle. There's a, you know, the bullish hammer, which is a, like a lower shadow wick type of type of candle that pushes up to the upside. There's, there's a bunch of different ones. So I recommend you go read them and study them. Try to find some resources on that because it's pretty important and candles can tell you a lot. So what this candle is telling us is not much. It just, you know, reacted a little bit to the resistance. That's why there's this little top wick. Nothing nothing major, though. I mean, we got a big gap. So that's something to keep in mind for this week. This could eventually fill. We just need a little bit more evidence of volatility coming back and maybe some type of candle on the one day showing that it's going to, you know, reverse back down. In order to do that, it would likely have to get into the gap area. And if that Friday low breaks and we go into the gap, that's a good reversal signal that could take us lower. So make sure you watch that. Mark this gap especially. And then keep an eye on this 44390. It will have to get over that to go higher. So this is an inflection point. You will need to see a little bit of confirmation. So you either need to see a break over or we want to see it start entering the gap. And those are your two triggers. So gap or break over this.
gap or break over this. If we break over this, you could look at upside. If we break into this gap, you can start looking for downside. Simple as that. So that's for the SPY. Just keep those levels in focus. All right, and next we're going into the QQQ. So this one's actually a little bit more interesting because we're actually at a level from 2022. You can see this March 2022 level right here. So that's a 2022 level big resistance from when we were just starting to raise interest rates at a big drawdown, fell at least 20 to 30 percent. And now we've recovered, you know, so much of that. It's crazy. But I never underestimate, you know, optimism. And that's what we've seen here. So this 2022 resistance is pretty big. I am a little bit sketched out at it. I wouldn't want to just start aimlessly buying calls right here because we're still slightly below the resistance you can see that it's kind of rejected a couple weeks prior but it wasn't anything major all we did was make that inside bar that we covered last week and it broke out of that and even it, uh, it even broke down the inside bar as well and gave a nice little put scalp if you're able to catch that but the close under right here this is a close under the one week inside bar it was a total fake out because it got bought right back up so just made another higher low and now trying to come up and test those recent highs so unlike spy which actually tested that level qqq is not there yet which is interesting because maybe this could have a little bit more room up before it taps resistance and then it try to reject about there or i mean it could fall a little bit sh short but it all depends on monday honestly with the vix closing as low as low as it was i feel like the market may not you know go down too much on monday if we do and then you have to factor in you know low volume it's a half day people are out on holiday as well so there may not be much of anything but if i were to you know feel good about anything i would probably think that qqq is a little bit more room to tap this but i mean it's like i said it's kind of close so i mean you don't have much risk risk to reward and, you know if we opened right around where we closed on friday and opened right here i mean you got maybe two dollars to the upside before it hits resistance and that's about it so it's, it's kind of tough it's a tough one but like SPY, you know, this recent resistance is going to be, you know, your breakout point it needs to get above that in order to go higher. And then also you don't want to take puts or anything until, you know, it's starting to enter this gap and that gap can provide a trade to the downside. So it's very similar to SPY. You're either just waiting for the breakout of recent resistance or you're waiting for it to enter that gap and that'll give you a potential trade. So that's really all I got for that. Um, there's really not too much here. One thing I do like about QQQ is that it broke out of the inside bar and closed over it. So that could be a bullish signal as well. But like I said, we're going straight into that resistance. So I do need to see that resistance get taken out and I feel way better about upside. So just be careful of that recent resistance on SPY and QQQ. And then also be mindful of the gap below. Just watch those two areas very closely. All right, next for IWM. So last week we had this rally-based rally zone we were focused on. I said IWM had a potential to bounce from this area and the 200 SMA. It did exactly that. So IWM has been going with our you know projections and predictions pretty well surprisingly uh, it's been doing a little bit better than spy qqq in terms of you know giving opportunities because this demand zone which is great great rally base rally zone just by the book great bounce and overall great upside i mean it rallied 1.4 here rallied another half percent here rallied another one percent here and then closed up half a percent here so it's easily like three four percent to the upside on options this would have you know paid great so this week, right at resistance again, so you do have to be mindful of that, right at the 38.2% FIB that we covered a couple weeks ago. So the 38.2 just comes from this measurement from COVID lows up to recent highs. You got the 50% that acted as support, and then this is the 38.2, which is acted as resistance a couple times, and was our most recent resistance up here, uh, and then it fell back into, into the demand. So obviously, no calls on this. Uh, we're not looking at calls on this this week. Just it's too close to resistance. We have supply right here. We have the 38.2 here. You got MACD down a little bit. Maybe if the MACD crosses back up to the upside, you could look at calls. But then you're just going straight into supply. So you have to be mindful of that. I feel like I would need to see it breaking over 190 with confidence. If it gets, if it can get over 190 flat with confidence, and then you know get up to the 192s and break out of the supply zone. I'd feel good about upside, but otherwise, I feel like this could pull back a little bit just from what I'm seeing right here. This isn't the most bearish candle or anything. You know, it could just be a base candle. You know, it could hold up, try to, you know, make a base here, but um, it is that resistance. So you do have to be mindful of that. You can maybe look at put scalps here since it's right at resistance. Uh, obviously, that'll just take you down to maximum 184.45, which is this little 
shoulder right here, uh, previous support. So that's about as low as I could put it if it pulled back. And then upside, I feel like it's limited because it's just going into supply. But like I said, if it can get over 190 flat, that's pretty good. So make sure you watch that. Otherwise, you know, we're at resistance here. So you do want to be very careful. All right, next we're going into the VIX. So this damn 1350, it's the same thing. We closed right back over it. So we also do have a new VIX low here at 1273 is just insane to say uh, because I would not have predicted ever that volatility would end up back this low with interest rates up with macro risks with you know banks collapsing and just all this crap one thing you do have here we have the MACD on the VIX starting to curl back up which is really interesting because it hasn't curled since back here and then it spiked a little bit kind of found a chop range and then spiked again right here in late May so the MACD is back up after a couple weeks of selling. This could be a little bit of an early signal. Obviously, MACD is not, you know, religion or anything to, you know, abide by the law or anything, you know, because it's just a volatility indicator for the S&P. Uh, you don't trade it. You don't trade shares on it. You can trade options on it, but it is just an indicator. So, and usually volatility is designed to go lower just because, you know, the bull, uh, the market is naturally bullish, right? You know, it's designed to go up. It's de designed for people to retire. It's designed for people to collect dividends and, you know, eventually get out of work and, you know, be able to live on it, cash out their gains. So it's designed to go up. And that's why volatility naturally is just going to trend lower. But like I said, uh, this 1350, it did close back over that. So that's an interesting signal. That was our low that we covered, I think, last week. And then we made this new 1273 so this is a, just a little base out range but i got the same outlook as last week i need to see that 2021 low at 1410 get over I need to see that 2021 low at 1473 need to get over that and then most importantly what i have highlighted in green here 1553 we absolutely have to get it over 1553 that's all free space so this 1553 would take you up to 1831 and that's this resistance right here. I have all the arrows so you can see why 1831 is important. And then above that, obviously, you know, is 20 flat. See all the arrows over here, 20 flat, crazy resistance. You got a rejection here at 20 flat, 20 flat, and just a little wick high at 2133. So the close over 20 is obviously the most important if you want to see volatility come back. But short term, 1553 absolutely need to reclaim over that if we can do that i would feel good about the vix coming back up but otherwise focus on these 2021 lows make sure it gets over 15 flat first then you can look at 1553 uh and all that free space so i mean it's looking pretty good like i said macd starting to curl back up starting to see maybe a little bit of sign of it starting to bottom out but you do need a little bit more data so as for the VIX, just make sure you focus on 1553. It's the most important to get back over. All right, next we're going into the DXY. So last week I was pretty confident it would get over 103 just because of this breakout. Simple as that. I saw the breakout and I figured it would, you know, reclaim the COVID peak. It did very briefly, but it did nothing for the market. So it didn't bring the market lower, even though this broke out. And uh, I've pretty much been covering that the last couple of weeks. The DXY by itself has just not been a good indicator. So you do want to pair it like with the VIX. You want to see VIX going up and dollar going up. That gives you a good sign for volatility. Otherwise, you know, not so much. I mean, it does, it respects when, you know, the, when the dollar goes down, the market will go up, but when the dollar goes up, market doesn't really care too much lately. And obviously it's not going to stay like that forever, but right now equities are in la la land. So you have to be mindful of that for the dollar this week. I mean, it's basically unchanged. We looked at, we looked at this Friday, the 23rd, and then we opened up here Monday and we're basically at the same spot. So we were at 102.80s. When we were looking at it last time, we're only at 102.96 now, so slightly under 103. Like I said, if we can get back over 103, I consider this level over 103 pretty elevated. And the reason for that is because that's where the dollar peaked out in 2020 during COVID. I say that every week. One thing you do have here as well, MACD starting to cross back up, so that's interesting. That, that could be a sign that the dollar's trying to curl back up here, but it would need to get back over 103 and stay over 103. If we can do that. Obviously, you do have this resistance here at 104.70, uh, 104.699. You could just round it up. Uh, there's a recent little peak right here. If we go down, down, go down to the one hour, there's a resistance right here at 103.54. So we would need to get over that as well. But otherwise, I mean, it's kind of choppy, right? I mean, you got, but overall, it's making, you know, higher low could hold up a higher low here as well. So be mindful of that. But like I said, make sure you're using the VIX in conjunction with it or not just using it by itself because the dollar by itself just hasn't been working that great lately so 
you just want to see it staying over 103. If it starts falling back under 103 with confidence, that's probably just going to take you down to 102 again, which is this little base right here. So that's the levels of focus, just 103, 103.54, just this recent peak, and then 102. And then you could kind of think of 103 as like, you know, the medium point. It needs to either get over that or stay under that in order to get to either here or get to here. But make sure, you know, you're seeing the VIX kind of moving with it as well. If you want to see volatility come back up, you know, look for both of them to move up. But I mean, if you're using this as like a gauge, you know, if you see the dollar red and you take that as a bullish signal for equities, you could do that because the market's been respecting that pretty well. You know, when the dollar has a red day, the market's been going up. So you could definitely pay attention to that. But in terms of if you want to see the dollar going up and volatility going up, make sure you're looking at the VIX as well. That's all I mean by that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. Like I said, we do have a half day Monday, so you don't have to do anything on Monday. Volume's going to be low. I mean, a lot of people are going to be out. I'm guessing a lot of Wall Street's probably on vacation or, you know, spending time with their families. So activity is going to be low. So you don't have to do anything Monday or Tuesday if you don't want to. But if you do, you know, just focus on all the stuff we went over and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all full days, all regular business as usual. So I'm going to get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trades YouTube channel. And I'm out.